Hey, Weather Warriors, in this video, we're talking about an explosion of lake effect snow that could occur towards mid-November. That's what we're going to talk about. I'm also going to give you an update on the northeastern U.S. snowstorm in the second half of the video. But first, if you like videos like this, extreme weather videos, daily forecasts, detailed long-range forecasts, stuff you want to see on TV, hit that subscribe button below because we'll be releasing these on a daily basis. I also have my winter forecast coming out as well and comment below have you ever experienced like effect snow i'm curious to know if you have because it is a unique and fun experience so the first thing we're going to look at here is the 500 millibar temperatures this is important for lake effect snow events now the models are going to give we're well, going to show you how much snow is going to fall and what the models are showing but you know this far out the gfs isn't all that accurate with mesoscale banding and stuff so we kind of have to do some old school weather and that's what we're going to do on this channel so we really want to look for very very cold air masses up in the mid levels 500 millibars is higher up in the atmosphere you can imagine your jet stream right here and the surface right here this is 500 millibars kind of in there and you really want a cold deep air mass from the surface all the way up so it's cold everywhere except for the lakes which are warm that's going to create some a lot of vertical velocity for potentially some snow in this area so you got a very cold polar air mass setting up right here after a very strong cold air arctic outbreak right right now we're looking at theta and these are kind of like blankets of temperature in the atmosphere and yeah essentially this is your air mass right in this region right here your cold air mass the great lakes are obviously included in that so this is a very good setup we got the cold air in place and you can see temperatures this is going to be around the 12th by the way and this is uh, mid-november but this is going to last for a week or two so you know, it'll start around maybe the, the 10th or so and then last through maybe the 17th or 18th. And we're going to look at that in a second. But this is right now uh, the morning of the 12th at 1 a.m. And you can see temperatures in the teens. Look at that. Single digits out in Wisconsin, Michigan, teens. And then right along the lake, obviously, it's going to be a little bit warmer. The temperatures in the lake are in the 40s and 50s right now. So right along the coast, it might be in the 20s or so. It kind of uh, evens out just a bit. And as you look towards the northeastern U.S., it's just still very cold over there as well. So this is a very uh, good setup for lake effect snow. How about the uh, column max temperature? So this is the maximum column temperature in the atmosphere and you're going to want these things completely below freezing for lake effect snow and here's your freezing line right there that's zero degrees celsius and you can see that everywhere in here except maybe the parts of the lakes are below freezing so we got that so it's going to clearly be snow how about the lake temperatures this is a uh, lake superior it's going to be uh, one of the colder lakes it's checking in around uh, eight degrees seven degrees celsius it might be nine that's actually nine degrees yeah, you know, so you know maybe temperatures in the 40s or so. You look at uh, Michigan, it's around uh, 10 or 11 degrees Celsius. You look at Huron, uh, and you know you're talking about 11. And then uh, Lake Erie is going to be one of the warmer ones. So I actually expect Lake Erie to have some decent snow with this one. That's around 15 degrees Celsius. It's in the 50s or so uh, Fahrenheit. And then you look at Ontario, and uh, it's about 13 or, or so. So Ontario and Erie are pretty warm right now. The other thing we got to look for is winds out of the northwest. And we clearly got that. You got your cold Arctic air mass coming out of the northwest, typically. You know, that's, you know, you're going to be infecting some cold air in. And then you got these warm lakes. And you want that wind to be kind of going at an angle so it picks up, you know, fetches more. Uh, uh, water essentially more moisture and uh, so you're going to get some snow kind of right out in this region just ahead uh, of the wind okay so that's kind of where your best bet's going to be and the, most of the most of the time this happens it's going to be northwest winds with this system if you go to the northeast and again you really want about 10 to 20 miles an hour you know if you get too strong it's you know you're still going to get snow but it's going to be more widespread maybe not that quite far but you know it's going to be wider spread and it's going to be a little bit more inland with weaker winds it's going to be less widespread but potentially very intense near the coast so that's something else we will uh, watch day by day so you could expect the snow bands to be a little bit more intense over here and not as far inland maybe over here they're a little bit more inland because they're a little more perpendicular to the lake but you know, this area right here out ahead of this you can see all that fetch right there probably a pretty good area for snow uh, near lake erie there so 
let's get uh, into the relative humidity. First, I want to show you something. You know, with the lake temperatures, we really want to be about 10 degrees warmer on that lake. And, you know, you got temperatures in the 40s and 50s and then on the lakes and then at surface, you know, you're talking 20s and, and teens, really. Um, but uh, maybe, uh, you know, this area looks pretty prime. And then obviously, um, as you go towards Lake Erie, I believe, is going to be a pretty good area, too. You know, Lake Erie was in the f almost 50s or so, lake temperatures. And then you got teens out there. So probably some pretty good snow out there. How about the moisture? Well, we got plenty of moisture. This is the areas you want to watch these bands. This is the mid-level 700 millibar of uh, relative humidity. And essentially, you can see these uh, plumes of humidity just above the surface in the mid-levels coming off the lake. And near and around these areas, that's where your best uh, snowfall is going to be. So plenty of uh, moisture out there. And even more out here as you head towards, uh, you know, Lake Erie and on, you know, so all the way out into New York, it looks like. So, you know, probably not every area out here is going to get snow. It's probably going to be much more uh, closer to the Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. So a lot closer to the coast, but still nonetheless pretty interesting. They got the 700 millibar velocity. This is going to give you kind of your lift, your mid-level lift, how fast are particles rising in the mid-levels. And you can see it's very intense here. So there's probably a decent snow band that would set up right in this region. And our mesoscale models the day of will be a lot better at determining where these things set up, but plenty of patches of uh, lift out in these areas, kind of uh, in a way, kind of like instability in a way. So that's that. And then the other thing we want to look for is the, the skew T soundings. And you can see the temperature is this red line here, very cold air mass in play, directional shear or uh, unidirectional shear. So there, there's not a whole lot of uh, change with height in the direct uh, the wind shear. And you can see that's there for the most part, a little bit in the mid levels that could uh, kind of screw things up just a bit. But for the most part, it's pretty unidirectional, which will uh, support uh, like organized bands because if you get too much spinning, it can kind of disorganize the bands. So let's take this day by day now. We're looking at the 10th, this is Sunday. Um, well, this is going to be uh, Saturday night at 7 p.m., but Sunday Zulu. So around Saturday at, at 7 p.m., you can see a low pressure system out here. A little clipper system is going to be moving to the east. There's a high pressure system sitting out here western parts of Canada. This is going to spill into the U.S., and this is going to set up this area for lots of uh, snow. So, yeah, you know, you can imagine your north winds are kind of around this high pressure, kind of around this low. And it's going to really uh, bring in a cold air mass and set this thing up. You're going to get an initial snow wave that moves through with this clipper system, perhaps some more down here as you head towards uh, Saturday and Sunday. You know, as we go towards uh, Sunday now at 7 p.m., uh, you know, the clipper moves to the east. Our lake effect snow starts to fire up. This high is moving in now, and you got probably some northwest winds, north, north winds coming out into this region right here. Very cold temperatures. You can see this 540 line is kind of your average temperature being freezing. And you're all the way at 504 almost in the northern U.S. So very cold air mass. This is kind of January caliber. Um, and as you can see, this continues. I mean, you're talking some of the coldest air of the season in North America setting up right over here. Northwest winds, you can see those lake effect snows starting to fire up. You can see the precip right along the lakes, and it's kind of moving at an, uh, a northwest to southeast angle. As you can see, uh, this is Tuesday at uh, around 1 a.m. About, yeah, it's going to be around 1 a.m. Tuesday. You can see some bands setting up there. There's that lift I was talking about, that mid-level lift, really strong in that area. This is going to change a lot, so we'll... Uh, you know, make some updates if anything crazy happens, but we're just looking at the potential right now. And you can obviously see a very heavy snow band right in that region. As you go towards the northeastern United States, those warm waters off Lake Erie, it's going to put a nice band out. You had kind of a north, almost west-northwest winds. Actually, let me redraw that, west-northwest winds. And that's going to help the fetch over here. Probably going to give some decent uh, snow bands that set up just uh, to the east of Lake Erie. Erie, and then also a little bit near Ontario as well. So how about uh, the day on uh, Tuesday night now? This is around 7 p.m. Still a little bit of lake effect snow. This high pressure is moving to the east. So we'll fast forward it again, and then uh, we'll go to Wednesday around 7 p.m. We'll clipper up here, high pressure system out here. 
Still pretty good northwest winds, still very cold air. It's going to be another batch of snow that develops on Wednesday around 7 p.m. Then we go to Thursday. That clipper moves to the east, so it actually will give you a reinforcing shot of snow for the northeastern United States. Might actually be a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, lake effect snow. The, the the thing to look for now is the highs over to the east, and there is one out here, but it is warming up, so the potential will start to die down mid month if it starts to warm up. And as you can see here, another high moves in, but it's really starting to warm up now, and you're going to start to get winds more southerly and really the northwest winds are kind of tapering off the arctic air mass is now starting to move to the east and so around the 16th or so that's around s saturday at 7 p.m and that'll start to taper off but nonetheless that week from around the 11th to the 16th or so there could be quite a bit of snow out in the great lakes region so how much is the gfs saying well you know, the GFS is not going to do great with mesoscale bandings, which is 90% of these lake effect snow events. So it's it's going to have a hard time seeing this locally. You know, you know, just because it says two feet here doesn't mean everyone's going to get two feet. It might be a small area. And also it might be a very small area that gets like three feet because the GFS sometimes can't see those mesoscale bands. Um, as effectively as like the HRR. But nonetheless, this uh, model is showing close to two to three feet out here where that heavy lift was, where that uh, fetch was pretty good. And right along, you know, see these uh, waters right here. It's a larger fetch coming down here. There could be some decent snow in that area, but nonetheless, there's a good eight to 12 inches here for much of uh, Western Michigan, even parts of Wisconsin, the Northern parts of Wisconsin. And uh, as we head towards the northeast, you can see here we are, Lake Erie. There's a good uh, 12 to 15 inches in there right along the coast. And I really do think if you can get some kind of west, northwest winds, you're going to have some pretty good fetch for some pretty good snow out here in this area. The winds are a little bit stronger at times out here, which could blow it more inland as you get towards New York and Pennsylvania and potentially Ohio as well. And obviously this model is showing good 6 to 15 inches in that area during that time. I do think that we'll, if we do get this setup to occur, we could have some localized areas well over a foot. Uh, it's going to be very small, not very widespread. But again, you know, the mesoscale models will handle that better. And as you go farther north into New York, a good 6 to 12 inches as well. Uh, but part of that might be the system that is coming out this weekend or uh, yeah, around uh, later this week, and we'll get into that in a second. This is uh, a little more widespread view, I believe, and you had that clipper. This is with the clipper system that moved through. Still plenty of snow out here, and then obviously Michigan. Look at that, six to eight inches with that clipper, but we're not going to talk about that in this video too much. So that was mostly just the uh, lake effect that I was talking about. Now we're going to check out that northeastern U.S. winter storm. Now, I know a lot of people were saying this is going to be a, a very major storm. And I like to I like to save the word major for, like, storms that are in the 12 to 24-inch range. Um, you know, that's all a matter of opinion. But I, I honestly think this is going to be more of a moderate storm, except for maybe areas in the far, far northeastern United States towards Maine where the slow pressure system will really start getting going. There's a lot of warm water out here south of Maine, and this strength, that gradient could really strengthen the low pressure system. Maybe not quite to bombogenesis caliber, but definitely could strengthen this system. And the upper levels have been a little bit slow this year at organizing. It seems like the models have been a little too uh, not progressive enough with the uh, upper level. So that's another uh, factor to take in. But either way, decent batch of snow for the northeastern United States. And then the NAM computer model obviously showing a good area of snow. This is obviously around Friday at 7 p.m. or Thursday night at 7 p.m. But this is going to last through, you know, th Thursday through Saturday or so. And it's really flat looking, so it's not a terribly organized system but there will be a nice batch of probably uh, four to eight inches in the northeastern united states with this system i'm not overly impressed with the you know major aspects of this i, I think it's going to be more of a moderate event you look at the upper levels it's kind of flat looking 
you really want to see a nice bowling ball closed off type of system. And that does happen. You know, this is uh, Thursday night at 7. As you go towards Friday at 1 p.m., this does start to organize here. But by the time it organizes, your best divergence, your best lift is going to be kind of right off the coast and maybe towards Maine and you know, parts of Canada there. So it might actually organize just a little bit too late uh, with the system. And the previous couple storms have been... Uh, the models have kind of overestimated the uh, or underestimated the speed and the organization with these things. It seems like they organize a little bit later than what the models were saying. It'll be interesting to see if this happens with this particular model. The NAM computer model has a swath of uh, several inches for northeastern United States. This area looks kind of chippy on them, this particular model. I mean, you look at the Euro and the other models, it's a good three to eight inches out there. And then obviously out here, it's a good six to eight or so. I like us, I'm generally thinking, uh, you know, in this region, four to eight inches with Maine really being the bullseye here with maybe six to 10 inches or so as you go towards Maine. So I guess in Maine, maybe it's more of a significant event. But uh, the rest of the Northeast, it's really, you know, you have to really get this system going. It's going to be kind of flat and it's going to be a little bit late to organize. But either way, it's, it's November and we're talking about a pretty decent snow event for this area as we head towards, uh, you know, mid-November here. So really kicking off early. This is a pattern we'll probably see more in the winter that could deliver much bigger storms in this region than the one we are seeing right now. So this is a good sign if you like snow in the northeastern United States. Already getting your uh, snow totals racked up on the records list. Who knows how deep the records will go this winter. So nonetheless, that's going to be uh, about it for today. Again, if you like daily forecast updates, Daily forecast breakdowns go more in depth than the stuff you see on TV. If you like uh, time lapses, extreme weather events, click that subscribe button. Also, comment below if you've ever experienced lake effect snow. And uh, check out my winter forecast. I'll be posting it up there. And uh, smash that thumbs up button if you found this video helpful. And then uh, also subscribe. And uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day, and we'll see you soon.